you still see the meteor? Yes, Vina. And it's drawing nearer and nearer. You already have a comet named after you, Professor. So this one's mine. You promised. Bobby's Comet. Maybe it's as big as the world. Maybe bigger. Maybe Bobby, it's... just now it's very small, but very menacing. In moments now, it will strike the Earth. We can watch it fall on physiograph. Let's hope it doesn't fall too close. Gosh, Peter, it'd be a dirty trick if my comet landed on top of it. There's no sound to a comet or a meteor. I'm going to get a closer view of my telescope. observation of the meteor approaching Earth. It isn't a meteor, it's a rocket, a man-made weapon. One moment, please. Mark, our latest tabulation, quickly. Position now, celestial meridian, 87 degrees. Parallel, 233 degrees. Moment of contact with Earth, checked, rechecked, and is now absolute. 15, 10, plus 30. Professor, you, who's shooting at us? I don't know, Bobby. No one knows. Forty-five seconds to go, sir. Twenty seconds, sir. Press two degrees, point five north of here. Why, it's headed right for the Newton Observatory, where the professor is. Seven seconds more, sir. Professor Newton, Dina, Bobby. Professor Newton, answer. Are you all right? A meteor is playing tag with us. But we're okay, Mr. Secretary. Yes. Luckily, the weapon just missed the mountaintop here where we are. But I'm afraid it hit the Internation Airport. We'll drive over immediately and see. I'll report to you from there. where it landed. Just as I said, the airport. It barely missed the landing strip. Fortunately, no one was hurt. I'll order equipment to lower me into the crater. I only hope there's enough of the weapon left so I can find out something about it. We've got to somehow, but take no unnecessary chances. Be careful, Professor. We're lucky, Marshal. If this is the start of a bombardment of Earth, their first shot was wasted. Where's Rocky Jones? That's Rocky in his orbit jet, sir. Rocky isn't convinced that Griff is dead, so he's patrolling the Asiatic region to be on the lookout. Right.
Hey, Winky. The astrophone's running over. Get on it. Office of Space Affairs to XV-2. Calling Space Ranger Rocky Jones. This is the XV-2 to Office of Space Affairs. This is Rocky Jones. Cancel your patrol, Rocky. Report back immediately. Yes, sir. We should make it by 0214. Over and out. You know what? You backtracked into our song wash and woke me up. Well, maybe Secretary Drake will give you office duty at our Tibet Observatory. Forty below zero. That's fine, sleeping mother. Oh, no, no. Anything but that. I'll stay awake. What in the name of space? What is it? What was it? Now these, these are the fragments I was able to dig from the crater. The entire missile, its shell, its mechanism, was built of this crystal-like material, which I would call a poor substitute for our alloys. Poor substitute, Professor. Now, for anything at all to remain after such an impact, I think, is remarkable. Especially after the great distance it traveled. Phenomenal power, Rocky. Yes. We on Earth. With all our ego, we are far behind whoever built this missile. Well, what about atomic energy, Professor? Oh, they probably had that long before we did. Oh, Marshal, have you been able to contact our Tibet station? Haven't they answered yet? Sorry, sir, they haven't replied to my signals. I'll keep on trying. I can say this, however, that basically the power used to project their strange weapon is developed by friction. For example, rub two pieces of crystal together and intense heat and energy are generated. Ow! Careful, Bobby. That's powerful material. That's right, Bobby. Now, Vina, what are your conclusions in this matter? Well, sir, I can show you one of the map. By that tracking, the constant arc of the orbit, since you first saw the missile, it could only have come from here, Jupiter's moon. Fornax. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Professor, that moon was so hot it was used to coin our word furnace. Why, Fornax glitters with a white heat so intense, nothing could possibly live there. Ah, oh, nothing perhaps but crystal. And crystal grows in such intense heat. And growth is life. We've always believed that there could be no life on Fornax. But a true scientist never believes anything until it's proven. Professor, you've heard the saying, seeing is believing. Of course, but Rocky, you don't mean that... Exactly. We'll see for ourselves. You're a brave lad, Rocky. It will be a dangerous mission. But, oh, what an exciting and worthwhile adventure. Professor Newton believes they need our ores and alloys for metal, just as we would like to learn about their great wealth of energy. Well, what do you think, Rocky? Can we make it? It'll be a rough hop, Winky. From right here to right there. And we'll be out of the traffic area all the way. Mm -hmm. Well, where's our refueling station? Winky. Right here to right there. Oh, you mean if we're lucky? Stand by for report to headquarters. Mr. Secretary, we've made contact with the Tibet Observatory. Secretary of Space Drake asking information on missile which crashed in your area. Approximate time, 1300. I saw it land, Mr. Secretary, and dispatched the rangers stationed here to investigate. Regardless of what they find, you are to report simply that a meteor fell. I don't want the real story to leak out. What is the real story, Mr. Secretary? Two missiles with fantastic power have been projected to Earth from Fornax. Fornax? Professor Newton is certain that the planet is rich in an energy greater than atomic. Brief your rangers when they return. 
And this information is not to be made public until Rocky returns from an explorative flight and we can stake a claim. Very well, sir. Now, don't interfere in this, Griff. You haven't got a chance. So four nights is a rich prize, eh? And Rocky's going to stake a claim for Drake. Well... You won't get the Fornax first. In fact, you won't get there at all. If we can blast off by 0730, planetary positions will be at the best. Uh, Rocky, I've been nailed to desk duty long enough. May I make the hop? I wish you could, Marshal, but Professor Newton must go to handle the scientific end. Vina will assist him and relieve Winky as navigator. That's my crew. Maybe next trip. Rocky! What about me? Uh, not this trip, Bobby. But, Rocky, I'm getting to be a real big guy. I'm growing and putting on weight every day. Gosh, and my muscles are... Sorry, Bobby. It's a long hop. We have to conserve all space and weight. Uh, I was only kidding, Rocky. You know I'm just a little fella. Gosh, I hardly weigh anything. Really, I'm anemic. Bobby is more valuable to me than his weight and instrument. Crew members, prepare for blast off. Bobby, get to work. Roaring rockets. You mean I can go along? That's what I said. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stripped of all weapons except the bow missiles, Mr. Secretary. I'm sorry it had to be done. But with the full capacity load of fuel, you're still on the danger mark of a successful blast-off. Well, sir, what good are weapons? If the folks on Fornax want to fight and they have as much power as the professor says, then anything we'd have would look like so many pea shooters. Quite right, Winky. Ship ready for blast-off, sir. The ground crew is ready too, Rocky. The propulsion necessary to get you off Earth is 20 tons against a power setting of eight. The acceleration thrust will be G4.6. Shall I alert the blast off synchronizer, sir? I'll do it, Winky. Take positions. Ovina. I know what you're going to say, Rocky. With an acceleration of G4.6, there will be a shock which will cause us to black out. Don't worry, Rocky. Professor Bobby and I are up to it. We'll be the best crew you've ever had. Thank you, Vena. Switch on blast off synchronizer. Happy landing on Fornax, Rocky. My main worries will be over when you're safely in space. You're loaded with fuel to the limit. We'll make it, sir.
Perfect blast off, sir. I sure hope the robot control keeps the ship on course until Rocky retires to consciousness. I'm sure it will, Marshal. Crash dive. Rocky! Rocky, can you hear me? Rocky! Come in, Rocky! Rocky! Pull out of your dive! Blast off successful. Ship under manual control. Out. Gosh. What happened? You must have come to and then blacked out again. Golly, Rocky, I... Go tell the crew the blast off was super stellar. Rocky, in case there are no landing facilities. Or do we face that problem when we come to it? No, they don't. The professor is right, and he usually is. We won't find the necessary steel for a blast-off cradle, so our best bet is to attempt a landing on the tail section. Then we'll be ready for return flight. Sir, radar scope shows the reflection of a spaceship in the vicinity. State our flight license. Ask for identification. XV-2 on license flight 4, 540. Please come in and give flight license. XV-2 to unidentified spaceship. Please give flight license. XV-2 to unidentified spaceship. We haven't got a license, Rocky. But you'll find out who it is soon enough. Grit, huh? Right. Take your battle stations. Load missiles in the forward tube. Okay, Rocky. But that won't much more than scratch the pay of that ship. I know. Our only chance is to climb up into the rocket wars and score a direct hit in the tubes. That's going to be awful hot work and awful good shooting. Switch on the grin. Look. Call the crew forward, Mikey. As you know, we left with just enough fuel to get us to Fornax and return. We didn't anticipate the incident while blasting off, and... Well, now this brush with Griff has used our small fuel reserve. Now, we have three choices. The first, we return to Earth and refuel. You won't get my vote on that, Rocky. Nor mine. The second is to change course, head for the RV-5 space station, refuel, and continue on our way. That should get us to Fornax and back to Earth. Yes, but Rocky, we we can't risk taking the extra time. Think what could happen if a, if a third missile crashes Earth. What's your third plan, Rocky? Without further incident, we can probably make Fornax, but then we gamble. 
Does that moon really have life? And if so, can its inhabitants supply the power to get us back to it? You know how we're voting, Rocky. That goes for all of us, Rock. You see, even the orbit jet agrees. <laughs> Can't get her an inch off course. Hey, Winky, you see what I see? Well, rattle my rocket reflexes. Crew forward. Fornax, dead ahead. Mighty meteor. It's terrific. But sort of creepy, too. How many times have I watched and studied Jupiter's moon in the telescope? And now, now I'm going to land on it. Part of that moon looks like millions of diamonds. That starts to confirm your theory, Professor Newton. Prepare for landing. Take positions and check each other's safety harness. These instruments must be daffy. We're accelerating at 28 miles per second. Gravitational pulls terrific on us. I, it's twice that on Earth. Stand by to erect an encase, Jara. Standing by, sir. Erect and stabilize. You erect and stabilize. Give me a 90 degree error signal into Jaro. Signal in, sir. Hang on. We're turning ship. Set power, counteract gravitational pull. Counteraction power on, sir. Give me 3G boost, Winky. 3Gs. Give me an altitude count down. 65,000. 55,000. Forty-five thousand. Boost power. Give me more, Winky. More, more. Full power, Winky. Come on, get it. Full power on, Rocky, but we can't keep this up. Put on emergency tank. We're already on it. Sparkling Stardust, Skipper. I never thought we'd make it. End of the line, folks. Step right up for your first look at Fornax. Now, now, folks, don't crowd. There's plenty of room for one and all. Amazing. This means there is life, some kind of life here. Yeah, but what kind? to accept the apparent. Now, we've always believed that life wasn't possible on Fornax. But look, Rocky, look, those pyramids, now, they are not a phenomenon of nature. There must be a civilization here, too. Come on, Rocky, let's have a look around. we better see what we're in for first, Bobby. Winky, sir, uncage a mechanical canary. We'll first test the atmosphere out there. Can't take chances in a strange world. Come on, Bertie, get out there and investigate. And listen to me, Chirp Chirp. If you tell me that I've got to put on a spacesuit, I'm going to pluck all your tail feathers out one at a time the hard way. Would you take the atmosphere reading, please? Of course. Lena, let's bring the log up to date. Oh, dear. I do hope I brought the right clothes. So far, there's no trace of dangerous radiation. The temperature and humidity have dropped slightly from inside the ship. Nice little birdie. 
Landing on Fornax successful at 1410. But full acceleration was needed to counteract extreme gravitational pull. Our fuel is exhausted. You got that? There is evidence of a skilled human life. And we can only hope that the power which projected their missile to Earth can be adapted to our spaceship so that we can return again. I am hoping we will have the friendly cooperation of the people who probably live on this moon. Well, the birdie says tweet tweet, Rocky. It's spring and it's safe to go outside. That's right, Rocky. Why, it's comparable to a May Day in Connecticut. <laughs> I can almost smell the flowers. <laughs> Roaring rockets. Let's go out and have a real sniff. <laughs> Enter that in the log, Vena. <laughs> oh, Rocky. One moment, please. See, Rocky? I was right about their lack of alloys for steel. And their architecture it dates far back. Yes. I wonder how much those stone blocks weigh. Ooh, twice what they would on Earth. Uh, the ratio of weight here is two pounds to our one. We all feel it. And we'll be a lot heavier, too. Well, let's go meet the people. The seal is broken, sir. The escape hatches and ports are all open, and that's the fresh air of Fornax you smell. Can we have a look around now, Rocky? Sure, Bobby. And you'll probably see plenty. Alvina, haven't you been putting on weight lately? Me? Put on weight? No, I don't think so. Well, why not try the cargo scales? You better go with her, Bobby, and make sure she gives us an honest count. She doesn't look any heavier to me. No. Wait and see. Gosh, Rocky. She weighs 236 pounds. <laughs> Jumping satellites, Vera. You gotta go easy on the mashed potatoes. This is super cosmic. Hey, Professor, you said Connecticut. This is more like Palm Beach, Florida. I sure wish a 200-pound bathing beauty walked by. Where's the reception committee? Is there anyone here to greet us? Is there anyone here? Hello! Uh, we like you, Moon. Uh, you, us, the good friends, huh? Heap cosmic pals? No? You have journeyed from Earth? Ah, then the flight of our missile was a success. It attracted your attention to Fornax. I'm very glad you like him, Moon. But you speak our language. How is this possible? I have prepared for this occasion. You are not the first Earth people to visit us. Cemetery of Vinovex. Come on, Toll. I am Zoravac, the elected ruler of Fornax. Well, happy horizon, Mr. Zoravac. This is my boss, Rocky Jones. This is Vina and Professor Newton and Bobby, and my name's Winky. Uh, welcome to you and your crew. Thank you, Zervak. It was our pleasure to make this trip to your moon. When we return to Earth, others will follow to establish trade relations with you. Yes, and of great mutual gain, Zervak. Our steel and metals in exchange for your... <laughs> Professor Cardos. Eight years, Professor Newton. 
And I was the first to explore Fornax. Congratulations on your successful landing. I crashed, and I owe my life to the care given me by Zorovac and his Vansu. Oh, forgive me. Vansu means wife in English. You'll find me a changed man, Professor. Isn't it exactly as I said, Zorovac? Yes, Professor Cardos. But we lack the materials to build a spaceship like this. Well, let me show you how this baby's powered. That's where we're going to need your help, Mr. Zorovac. Professor. Yes, Rocky. Carlos. Don't I remember the name in connection with a murder and then he disappeared? Yes, Rocky. Lost in space was the general belief. While he was attempting an experiment for personal gain, he ruthlessly killed his two assistants. Oh, he was a brilliant man, but an egoist and extremely ambitious. A rare treat. Your spaceship is a miracle to my eyes. Well, now let me show you some of the miracles of Fornax. My Von Soon will welcome a charming companion like you, Vina. And Bobby. I'm sure my daughter, Volika, will welcome you. Volika, huh? Let's go, Mr. Zorovac. I've always wanted to meet a girl out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Please join us. You're about to see a boundless luxury. Zorovac, Winky and I better stay here and check the spaceship. We'll join you later. Rocky. Can't we get in on some of that luxury? Why spend our time tinkering, Rocky? Let's go out and see the town, huh? Sure, Winky. But let's see it first on Visiograph. Strange things can happen on a strange moon. Uh, perhaps this added modulator will cut the density. I don't know. We're here. We can see it with these things. And you want to see it on that thing. You got it, Rocky. There it is. Now for a look inside. Oh, those boundless luxuries. Bring in the sound, Winky. So this missile was our only means to communicate with you on Earth. Yes, yes, of course, but uh, now about this fantastic power. On Earth, you would call it a highly sensitive form of silicon. For use in the missile, it was pulverized, captured in an object no larger than this. And a series of pinpoint escape valves provided the thrust, giving tremendous power. Then it can be adapted to the rocket tubes of a spaceship? It is the only power great enough to counteract the gravitation of Fornax. Without it, escape is not possible. Well, that's settled. Since they're friendly, we have nothing to worry about. Oh, that running around sure gets you out here. More than back on Earth. Daddy? That's right, Bolica. Daddy, can you play baseball? Baseball? An Earth game, Zorovac. Oh, it's played all over now. <laughs> Tina! <laughs> wow, get a load of Vina. Professor Cardos, I envy you your eight years on Fornax. Mm. Please, Professor, make yourself at home. We'll return presently. Hey, Rocky, let's get in on... Professor Cardos, they talked about friendly trade, about the mutual gain of an exchange. Isn't it possible that we could become friends? Sort of that. I warned you of the way Earthmen make satellites of every planet and moon in space. They first deceive, then colonize, rob, and enslave. For the time being, we'll play their game of deceit.
good old physiograph. I'm sure glad you decided to tinker with it. Professor Cardos, are a few moments with deceitful Earth people going to destroy the work of years? Point one of our plan is complete. We know the accuracy of our missile. And they have sent us a spaceship. Now for point two. There's something in those walls that positive rays can't cut. So you want to see Pornax with these, huh, Winky? All right, let's go. Right, Skipper. Bobby's right. Running around in this moon sure gets you. My atoms are slowing down. in the warhead attached to back. We are now prepared to fire a missile every Earth month. Four of them should turn the trick. Look, Professor Cardos. Yes, Solovac. That's the spaceship that will take us into their communication zone to negotiate a surrender on our terms. I wasn't thinking about the spaceship. You've always taught me that we were surrounded by a galaxy of enemies. There was no such thing as friendship in the universe. Now that I've seen these people from Earth, I'm beginning to question your teachings. <laughs> from the earth. He'll be interested in the way you have returned our offer of hospitality. Space Ranger's job is to keep peace. Mr. Zorovac, don't you believe the word Professor Cardos told you? We don't try to conquer anybody. The laws of the United Worlds of the solar system give every planet and moon their independence. And the only fighting we do, Mr. Zorovac, is when someone gets out of line. Zorovac, you... There's only one way to settle the discrepancy in the stories about the Earth. I will go with the Space Rangers and find out for myself. Zorovac, Carlos! Professor Newton, you and Vina and the boy will remain as hostages under the rule of my von Soom. That's superstellar with us, Mr. Zorovac. You'll like her. I'm sure I will, Bobby. We will give the Earth people all possible assistance in adapting our power to their spaceship. Hey, Roger. 
Rocky. We've really got some thoroughbreds in the harness. Oh, good. Oh, Professor, did you take an instrument calculation? Yes, Rocky, and it's truly astounding. The mass of the rocket itself is M.8. Mass of payload, M.5. And mass of necessary fuel load, only M.2. That gives us a blast-off mass of M.15, which balances against equation of exhaust velocity. And we thus have an ideal mass ratio of 2.72.1. Fine, Bobby. Glad to hear it. What do you say, Winky? Well, sir, uh... I'd say that she's going to work all right. Good. We'll try test flight tonight. Please, Mr. Rocky, may I go? Oh, sorry, Volica, but I'd better make the test hop alone. Alone, by alone, he means the two of us. This time I mean alone, Winky. By theory and calculation, we believe this new power is adaptable to the rocket ship, but a test flight may disprove our beliefs. Testing. Testing. Stand clear. All clear, Rocky. Hey, she sounds good, Rocky. Yeah, and she feels like there's plenty of zip. Hey, look, Rocky. Can't you be a good guy? Change your mind and let me climb in with you, will you? The next hop's a big one. I'll shake her down and see you in the morning. Rocky. Yeah? Hey, look, keep with an astrophone pickup, will you? And keep talking. You know, make like a disc jockey. I don't feel a bit sleepy. Sure, Winky. Well, the heat's on. I'll call in once I'm settled in space, partner. That sure is powerful stardust you're packing, Rocky. And you wouldn't let me in on the fun. Well, this is what I think of you. Bah! And the same thing goes for me, too, Rocky. Bah! And that's telling him, Bobby. You see, Skipper, you got a mutiny on your hands. Come on down. We'll put you in irons. Hey, Rocky. We're not really mad at you, Rocky. Rocky. Rocky, can you hear me? Come in, Rocky. Rocky. Rocky, please. Calling the XB2. Come in, Rocky. Look, Rocky, will you answer me? Calling the XB2. Come in, Rocky. Calling the XB2. Come in, Rocky. Calling the XB2. Come in, Rocky. Still no answer. Calling me XB2. No. You know, I was just thinking about something Secretary Drake once said to me. He said, just where you have a pal out there in space and he doesn't answer. There's nothing quite as frightening as silence. Come in, Professor, if the orbit jet is still in flight and, and Rocky, well, if everything's still okay out there, what about the fuel? We've no way of knowing the ratio of consumption, Winky. 
I'm afraid I have no answer for any of your questions, my boy. Hey, Bolica, look. Don't you see something? No, Bolly. You've been watching the sky so long, you're starting to see spots. That's not a spot. Come in. You still aren't talking. Hi, Rock. Hello, Winky. Vina. Gosh, Rock, it's good to see you. It sure is. Welcome back to base, Skipper. Hey, I forgot. We're mad at this guy. What's the idea of not calling in and, and throwing a chill at us? Oh, believe me, Winky, I had a chill thrown at me. Along with an altimeter that hit me right here. What happened, Rocky? All the instruments, including the astrophone, were knocked out. The blast-off thrust pulled them right out of the panel. We'll have to find some way to lessen the power. Well, that's no great problem, Rocky. But what about the instruments? Oh, I can take care of those. A little glue and some string and rubber bands. But the important thing is that the blast-off thrust balance exactly to the exhaust velocity, thereby maintaining the ideal mass ratio, which I believe is 2.72 Point one. However, the toggle switch, which runs the franistat, is sometimes thrown out of kilter, which only proves, as the old man said to the kangaroo, that science is a wonderful thing. Isn't that right, Bobby? Right, Winky. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Rocky. Thank you. And now we can... What do you call it? Oh, yes. Blast off for Earth. Yes, we're back. As soon as we make some repairs and alter the power ratio. I'm sorry we have to leave you and Vina and Bobby behind. Be sure and keep a close watch on Carlos until I get back. Don't worry about us. We'll be all right, Rocky. So, thank you. signal is very weak, Professor. This is our last chance to communicate before leaving your zone. But we should be able to contact Earth within the month. Splendid! Then this wonderful new power we found here is working as planned. You're cosmic wreck, Professor. There's only one way to describe it. It's super spatial. In fact, we just passed a meteor like it was standing still. Oh, sorry, Black. Would you like to speak with Professor Newton? Oh, yes, thank you, Rocky. Is my von Soom with you, Professor Newton? Yes, Dorovac, I'm here. Dorovac? Dorovac! Newton to the XV-2. Come in, XV-2. Come in. Well, don't worry. Your husband and Rocky have already traveled beyond the reach of our words in that short space of time. <laughs> What tremendous power and speed. Spartano, W-O-V, Brock 
Rocco Vin, un Alcava de Governax, un officius. Rocco Vic. Alcavar de Governax, un Sparcano, W.O.V. Rocco Vic, Darganto. This is Griff, Darganto. The W.O.V. is crippled as a result of a skirmish with Rocky Jones. You'll have to help us into officius. Complete ellipse. We'll take over and guide you in. I'll arrange an audience with Suzerain Cleolanta at once. Yes, Argando. Out. Yes, Cleolanta, I mean Fornax. There it is. Here's our chance to claim a moon no one else has claimed. We have the same right to Fornax as the United World. Yes, if Rocky Jones doesn't get there before we do. Scientists teach that life is impossible at Fornax. So what good would it do if we did claim it? On Earth, we also believe that Fornax was uninhabitable. But then they fired two man-made missiles from there. They had such power, they reached all the way to Earth. That proves that Fornax has a strange, fantastic power. We must not miss the chance to claim this power for ourselves here on Opetius. To do this, Darganto, would you like to make an exploratory flight to Fornax? I prefer to call it a flight of conquest. and steel. Incredible. Yes, Mr. Secretary, to me, your Earth is truly incredible. Rocky, I must apologize for my suspicions of you. I see now that Cardos was an evil influence. Thank you, Zorovac. Sir, the civil police will be interested in a man named Cardos. I know where he can be found. That's a new and funny word to me. Picnic. Let's go on a picnic every day. No, Wallaka. You can't do that. Well, I guess you could. If you pretend that this is summer vacation. Vacation? What's that? Well, that's when you don't have to go to school. What a wonderful idea. I like that word. Vacation. <laughs> Where the missiles are fired. Are you sure this will take us to your headquarters? Of course, we're almost there. Coman Toradella Zorovac. Somebody's talking. We're not supposed to be here. Coman Toradella Zorovac. Coman Tora. Coman Tora. Coman Tora. The Plantoba von und Rocket. Coman Tora. Rocket. What is it, Volga? Who's talking? That's Carlos. You have to overthrow the rule of my daddy's mom soon. He wants to fire more missiles at Earth. Right up to there. I feel the Montano. Montano the rocket. What's he saying about the rockets? He wants to fire more of them with those things on. The Orient's on. We better go tell your mother real quick. Come on, before it's too late. Valica, are you sure you heard Cardo say all those things? Yes, I was right there, too. She translated it and told me. I'll talk to those men who are plotting against my husband. And Professor Cardo, I'll teach him a lesson. You shall be in prison for this. Robot Cardo. Sentence shall be passed when Zorovac returns from Earth with Rocky Jones. Zagato, we can now get Fornax on the videograph. Good. 
Now to make a landing and claim it for ourselves before anyone else. What tremendous power it'll give us. Well, we're entering a strong gravitational field. But I hope... I mean, I think our ship can make it. We'll make an observation dive. Thirty-five thousand, twenty-five thousand, twenty. Can you see anything? Any signs of civilization? Yes, some strange pyramid-like buildings. A spaceship? Not yet. Full power on for a tight ellipse. We've got to see as much as possible. Roaring rockets, Professor. A spaceship. Maybe Rocky and Zorvac have turned back. That isn't like Rocky. Handle the landing, Griff. I'll check and gear for battle, just in case we run into something unexpected. Chip Rocky took off in. Bobby's right. Do you recognize it, Professor? No. Golly, all of Gemini. This is terrible. I wish there was some way we could warn Rocky. Darganto, I have something interesting to show you out there. Something very interesting. There's no sign of Rocky Jones' spaceship, but look, Dargato. Oh, that's intensely interesting, Griff. Switch on the amplifier. Amplifier on. Warning to Fornax inhabitants, we are preparing to land by force if necessary. You Earth people that I see must convey this message to the natives at once. This is Darganto. You and Daganto came just in time to prevent me from being put in prison. Well, this is where you convert the crystals to power, huh? <laughs> Whoever has this power which we control here can rule the universe. Miss Creolanta, will she appreciate my willingness to cooperate with the officious formation and reward me accordingly? You put the universe in our power. Name your own prize. Professor Newton, do you think these invaders will bombard Earth from here? Is that why they've come? I'm afraid, Sophina. We've got to do something. Yes, but if we can. Rocky do in a case like this. Excuse me, Secretary Drake. Professor Collins has a message for you. It seems to be urgent. Thanks, Wiki. Excuse me, Zorovac. Hello, Professor Collins. Uh, Secretary Drake. It's a strange missile, sir, headed for Earth. You can see it on the visiograph, sir. It's another attack by a missile from Fornax. Cardos. It's a warhead, Rocky. There's one way. Explode it before it strikes the Earth. Winky. Yes, Rocky. Take on a double load of atomic missiles and fuel for a quick blast off. Aye, aye, sir. Fornax is giving us trouble again. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it the warhead missile from Fornax? I want you to know that I'm on your side, Rocky. All the way. We'll talk more about that later. Right now, we've got to do something about Bobby and Bean and Professor Newton. And that missile coming toward us. We may pick up on visitor draft now, Rocky. What's the plan? We're going to have to act fast. I know. We'll hold steady on the collision course. We'll shoot at it with the warhead. We've got to score a direct hit in an explosion. It's too bad we haven't got a lariat. Maybe we could rope around towards Ophetius. Set instruments on missile. Give me a distance count. Aye, aye, sir. 90,000. 85. 80,000. 75. 75. 75. Close and fast. Sorvac, go into the navigation section and strap down quickly. Take control of the ship, Winky. Secure? Yes, sir. And hey, what about you? Rocky, you can't stand there. On your toes, Winky. Aye, aye, sir. XB2, come in orbit jet. They're with you, look. Somebody's calling us. Fornax to XB2, come in orbit jet. This is the XB2 to Fornax. Come in. Come in, Fornax. Did you hear that, Volica? It's Rocky. Calling, it's good to hear your voice, Rocky. Wow, uh, yours too, Bobby. Harvey and the professor. Okay, but listen carefully. Dargonto is here. So is Griffin Professor Cardos and a flock of Ophetians. They're waiting for you, Rocky. They're going to blow the orbit jet to bits. What are their plans? You think they intend to fire another missile at Earth? I don't know, but I've got a hunch I can find out. Good. Let's synchronize our watches, Bobby. Mine is stopped, and there's no way to set a watch in Fornax. It's 1544. Try to find out what you can. And call me back at 12 o'clock noon. Okay, over and out, sir. Out. Go tell Vina and the professor I talked to Rocky. Tell him he destroyed the missile on flight. But be careful nobody hears you. Go ahead, beat it. Now, what are you going to do, Bobby? A job for Rocky Jones. Hurry, and be careful. Take over. 
to roll a second missile into place. But I wouldn't advise firing until you're at a safe distance in space. The concussion might set off a chain reaction in your cargo of crystal. Then continue and fire the third missile as scheduled. By that time, Griff and I will be inside Earth's communication zone in our rocket ship so we can observe and act accordingly and warn them of a fourth attack if they don't surrender on our terms at once. We granted liberty, made certain laws which he disobeyed. Carter's has seen to it that the boy will give us no more trouble until I take him to Ophetius. Straight up, you've got to call Rocky. But what will I tell him, Bobby? Shh, the card's coming back. Go on, Monica. Go on. They're leaving for Ophetius in the morning. And then Professor Cardus is going to fire another missile at the Earth. And they've got Bobby locked up. And Mr. Rocky... They're going to take Bobby with them when they take off from here. We'll stop them before that happens, somehow. Thanks, Monica. This is alarm, sir. The target is Darganto's rocket ship on Fornax. Right as rockets, Winky. This will show your technicians how to adapt this power to your rocket ships, making them the finest in the universe. So what about me? You're not going to leave me behind after all I've done. We'll come back for you, Cardus. Don't worry. Power on, Winky. Prepare to fire. Ready, sir. Take battle station. He'll be back. We've got to do something. Stay at your post. Prepare to fire. That load of crystal on board? Not me. <laughs>
infidels. I demand that Cleolanta be informed of my imprisonment. She will be, Darganto. But your case will come up before the United Worlds. You'll get everything that's coming to you, which is plenty. Carlos, you'll be turned over to the civil police. Oh, yes, Griff. I'm sure Secretary Drake will want a hand in deciding your case. You know what happens to spies. And when it happens, I want to be in on it as a character witness. Ready for blast off, sir. Very good, Winky. All right, let's go. Rock, you want me to count noses? Here's mine. There's the professor's. She's not going to find Bobby's. Jones that we here on Fornax will be his friends through eternity. If ever he needs our help, all he has to do is ask. Thank you. Goodbye. You know, that kid has a way with the women. <laughs> 